Good morning, one and all. Today I'll be talking about one of the most deadliest and the killer disease uh, known to mankind, uh, with special likability to Indian population, old cancer. Now, cancer, as we know, is a misconcept uh, we uh, uh, constitute is uh, it as a single entity or a single disease with a single uh, etiology. But whereas in reality, cancer is uh, is a term given to a group of diseases with a, a variety or a spectrum of a uh, etiological factors or risk factors affecting the general population. Now, if you uh, look into the definition of cancer, if it is known as a malignant tumor, so what is the difference between a tumor and a, a cancerous uh, tumor? Now, the basic uh, the, uh, concept over here is abnormal or uncontrolled or uncoordinated growth of tissue or mass of tissue or cells. Now, when these cells invade into the other uh, structures or uh, has a potential to uh, go and uh, uh, implant itself into some other uh, organs within the human body and again cause another growth over there that is that uh, uh, character is attributed to a cancerous tissue whereas a tumor is a locally uh, growing uh, tissue of uh, uncoordinated uh, cell mass in both the cases the unique property of this particular group of diseases is uncoordinated cell mass now there's a, uh, a very uh, e we, we can easily uh, uh, cross over the line and uh, confuse ourselves between the terms of a cancerous tissue as well as a tumorous tissue. So the uh, difference of uh, both a cancerous tissue and a tumor has to be clearly uh, defined over here, and that is the potential t uh, potential of that particular tissue or a cell to metastasize or invade other tissues. So, according to the uh, definition, we can uh, see over here, it is a malignant tumor which has uh, uh, involving abnormal cell growth beyond the uh, normal growth potentiality to invade or spread to other parts, which is the most important part which differentiates it between a cancerous uh, tissue as well as normal uh, tumor tissue. So, if you look at the uh, diagram over here, we can easily uh, get to know the difference between a benign or a malignant tissue, a benign tumor as such and a malignant tumor. Now, if you see the uh, benign uh, tumors, we can see how well localized it is and uh, surrounded by a, norm, a, a hard or a thick fibrous connective tissue. Now, since the growth potential of this benign tissue, uh, benign uh, tumor is very less uh, compared or uh, compared to a cancerous tissue, the body has a time to heal itself or protect itself from the uh, effects of this uncoordinated cell growth. Now that effect is seen as a fibrous connective tissue which is nothing but the healing effect or a healing process or a response to this kind of cell growth. Now that won't be the case for a cancerous tissue or a malignant tumor as such wherein the growth potentiality and the invasion potentiality of that particular tissue is far more than the response of the human tissue or the normal human tissue. We can see how it has spread to the other tissues. Now this uh, spreading uh, depends upon various uh, factors or uh, characteristics uh, attributed to a cancerous tissue which I will be talking later. One of the most important character will be the presence of large number of vessels or angiogenesis as you can uh, see which is demarcated by the red tissue over here. Now the six characteristics of cancer, now the, these six characteristics are specific to a cancerous tissue and they are uh, all those few characteristics overlap with a benign tumor. There are few characteristics, especially the last uh, couple of points, which sets it apart from a benign tissue. Now what are these six characteristics? The first uh, four characteristics uh, is related to its growth potentiality. Now, in normal human tissues or in normal physiological uh, growth process, every cell or a tissue receives few signals via genetic codes or proteins which are produced elsewhere in the body. Now, these are called as growth uh, signals, growth signaling uh, molecules or proteins which help this tissue to grow for a specific period of time after which the same tissue is again uh, acted upon by different kind of uh, uh, proteins or molecules which limit or seize the growth capacity. Now these are called limiting, growth limiting factors. So the growth of a tissue in a specific area for a specific period of time is determined by growth signaling molecules as well as growth limiting molecules. Now these growth limiting molecules act upon the cell tissue or a, a cell mo molecule as such 
by the process called as a physiological process called as apoptosis now as you know apoptosis is nothing but a programmed cell death which actually helps the uh, human uh, body or a human tissue to maintain its normal uh, cell growth or cell cycle wherein old or dying uh, cells are totally uh, taken out from the uh, normal cell cycle and totally destroyed now this apoptosis uh, process is activated by few growth limiting molecules now in a cancerous tissue all these uh, uh, processes are totally uh, dysregulated one is to say there is a autonomous self sufficiency of growth uh, signaling molecules that is this particular cancerous tissue do not need any external stimuli or external molecules or protein molecules to ask it or tell it to grow it has its own uh, system wherein there is auton autonomous system wherein the growth is regulated by the cell itself now that is not seen in a normal uh, tissue that is a uh, concern uh, that is a uh, limited or a primary characteristic of a cancerous tissue now the second uh, point is a uh, insensitivity to the anti growth signals obviously when there is an autonomous uh, signaling process which enables this tissue to grow obviously it has to be insensitive or there is no effect of the external molecules or external protein molecules or external growth uh, limiting signals wherein that is the second characteristic obviously for that to happen it has to evade the deathly uh, apoptotic process or the physiological process there is a complete bypass of this physiological process wherein the molecules responsible for apoptosis are totally bypassed and their effect is not seen in a cancerous tissue now that all these uh, three uh, players or three characteristics enable the for the cancerous tissue to have limitless growth potentiality now the last two uh, points are specific to a cancerous tissue one the improved or the great amount of angiogenesis or increased amount of blood vessels which are seen now since the growth of a cancerous tissue is by far more than a benign uh, tissue or when compared to a normal tissue there is a huge uh, need for the uh, nutrition or a new, uh, new uh, great need for the resources which is taken care by new blood vessels or angiogenesis which is specific to a cancerous tissue there is lot a uh, lot of amount of uh, uh, new blood vessels regeneration of new blood uh, bl circulation within that specific uh, area which is taken care by activation of a few angiogenetic uh, Uh, uh proteins such as vgf which is nothing but vascular growth uh, factors you know these factors are activated in the cancer tissue thereby uh, leading to angiogenesis and the last one which is very important and specific to a cancer tissue is invasion or metastasis to other tissues now if we have a look at the risk factors of cancer we can see in the schematic uh, representation how the, there's a spectrum of uh, risk factors starting from the age or the demographic data starting with the age older age people have a more tendency to develop cancer tissues so there is an age related uh, proportionality with, uh, with uh, the increase in the probability of uh, the tissue developing into a cancerous tissue sex it is depend on um, the females uh, in few cases are more uh, uh, prone to have developing cancer especially when few etiological factors such as the growth hormones or the different end, uh, endocrine uh, glands uh, related uh, cancer tissues wherein the females are affected more and uh, if you take into the habits into consideration such as tobacco uh, chewing or tobacco uh, uh, smoking and other uh, etiological factors therein males are more uh, affected so depending upon the etiological factors uh, the gender by uh, based uh, probability of uh, the uh, individual developing cancer depends upon of course radiation chemotherapy these are all these uh, external uh, stimuli which basically damage the dna and uh, force the dna into developing a mutated uh, sequence or a mutated genetic code which leads uh, that specific tissue to develop into a cancerous tissue bypassing the normal physiological tissue which i'll be talking about now there is also genetic a uh, role wherein as i said the basic uh, uh, problem with the cancer tissue is the change in the genetic code or the genetic uh, uh, codes which uh, uh, project or uh, uh, translate or code for few proteins or uh, which are responsible or important in maintaining the normal physiological process now these uh, genetic codes are totally uh, translated or mutated 
wherein these proteins are uh, henceforth are not uh, produced in that cancer tissue, leading to further sequelae. Now, environmental factors like radiation exposure or uh, during uh, any uh, radiation hazards or atomic fire, nuclear fallout, all these uh, external stimuli or environmental hazards lead to da DNA damage, ultimately leading to genetic uh, uh, genetic uh, predisposition uh, to uh, cancerous tissue. Now, the, uh, as I said, endocrine metabolic factors, few of the endocrine uh, glands and the hormones of the, uh, which are produced uh, in the body autonomously, these are also held responsible to uh, albeit a fewer extent, a lesser extent, uh, which uh, they contribute to uh, the produ uh, production of cancerous tissues. Uh, other medical complications such as uh, implantation, that is one of the most medical, uh, important medical com uh, complication wherein a locally uh, invasive or a locally growing uh, tissue via surgical procedures might be, the cancerous tissues might be implanted accidentally via surgical pro processes into deeper tissues thereby transferring these uh, uh, molecules or uh, uh, the cancer cells to different uh, tissues, uh, different tissues or different areas. Now this is different from a metastasis wherein in metastasis the cell inherently possesses the uh, ability to uh, destroy the local uh, uh, matrix, the ground substance of the local matrix, then invade the blood vessels or the lymphatics and then uh, go into uh, different other tissues and lodge themselves in uh, other tissues and uh, again uh, produce secondary sites of cancerous areas. Now in uh, uh, direct implantation the cells do not have an inherent property but the, via surgical procedures we are implanting these cancer cells into the uh, bloodstream or the lymphatic stream which go into the other areas and implant and produce secondary areas of cancer tissues. Now, the, if you go into the molecular level, if you uh, go into, uh, if you look into the various uh, etiological factors which I talked about over here, the, such as radiation or chemotherapy or basic genetics, what is actually happening to this uh, DNA damage which is uh, producing a cancerous tissue? What's happening basically over here is activation of uh, proto oncogenes into actual oncogenes. Now, how that happens, you can see in this uh, schematic diagram. In presence of any external stimuli such as cancer causing agents, predominantly radiation or chemotherapy or uh, uh, endocrine factors, uh, endocrine hormonal factors, when a normal cell act, all, uh, all normal cells have a specific sequence which is called as proto oncogenes, which is nothing but an oncogene which is lying dormant or hidden for most part of the time until it is activated by an external stimuli. Now, when activated by this external stimuli, because of the molecular changes, this pro uh, uh, proto-oncogenes get activated into actual oncogenes or cancer producing cells. These are the basic focal spots or focal areas of cancer cells from which the cancer uh, spreads or uh, grows into an uh, uncoordinated mass. Now this activation of uh, this proto-oncogene, hence uh, uh, changes, this change itself converts a normal cell into a cancer cell. Now, what do you mean by this activated oncogene? Activation of oncogenes is nothing but a variety or a spectrum of DNA changes or DNA damages which take place, which enable this proto-oncogenes uh, to produce or start replicating in an uncoordinated manner. Now, what are the uh, variety of DNA damages? You have amplification, mutation, translocation or uh, gene arrangement. Now, simple change or a translocation or a uh, different uh, genetic codes or uh, difference in the nucleotides uh, pairings might uh, change this proto oncogenes into oncogenes. Now, this uh, change or a translocation or a disruption of the normal DNA strands is uh, the risk or probability of developing such a uh, damage is dependent upon the dose of uh, uh, dose and the frequency or the chronicity for which the patient is or for which the tissue is exposed to the external radiation uh, radiation or chemotherapy or etc or uh, other etiological factors now these are dna damages then uh, 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 change uh, this proto oncogenes or in other words activate these uh, proto oncogenes thereby producing the specific characteristics of cancer that is your cell uh, differentiation the cellular uh, uh, lack of apoptosis and cell proliferation thereby all these processes are, which are not normally seen in a physiological human cell totally disrupts the normal cell cycle or a normal growth cell cycle. Now, this disruption in cell cycle ultimately leads to excessive amount of cell uh, proliferation 
which is nothing but cancer. Now, if we continue into the molecular basis of uh, cancer, we have uh, already seen how the proto oncogenes change into uh, activated uh, oncogene. Now, if you uh, dig deeper into the actual etiology of uh, how this uh, uh, disruption of the normal cell cycle or the physiological process is taking place, one important uh, gene which is uh, responsible or one important protein which is uh, responsible for maintaining this physiological process is a P53 gene which uh, actually has an important role in uh, destroying the old cells as well as maintaining the normal cell cycle. Now how that is uh, possible you can see over here in the diagrams how it, uh, the P53 uh, gene basically has two uh, uh, functions. The primary function is DNA repair. So whenever there is a uh, minor external stimuli which uh, damages the DNA or damages the uh, DNA sequence uh, they, uh, via a variety of procedures such as as I said translocation or amplification or disruption or uh, change in the DNA sequence all this uh, DNA damages uh, minor damages are dealt with uh, p53 genes and it repairs this uh, DNA uh, 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 rep uh, repair this repairs this wounded DNA into back into the normal DNA thereby continuing the cell cycle that is the primary function of a p53 gene the other uh, uh, function or important function of uh, p53 gene is if the damage is far more than uh, the capabilities of this gene to repair that particular DNA, it is directly pushed into the normal physiological process called as apoptosis, as I said, which is nothing but programmed cell death. Now, these two are very important in a normal tissue, and these two are the main uh, principles by which a cancerous tissue survives in a human body. Now, what happens to a P53 gene? Uh, in a uh, uh, few cases, the molecular uh, uh, basis, if we uh, uh, talk about the molecular basis of a, a cancerous tissue, this P53 gene function is totally disrupted or dysregulated by increased amounts of uh, DNA damage or increased uh, 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 effect of uh, these uh, various etiological factors depending upon the chronicity and the frequency. The probability of damage of uh, P53 gene is increased. Now, whenever there is uh, damage of this uh, important uh, focus, uh, in the molecular basis that is uh, this P53 there is disruption of both the functions <coughs> both the functions uh, there is uh, no uh, DNA uh, repair and this uh, abnormal DNA carry on or uh, goes on to the next uh, second or the third generation thereby spreading uh, increasing the number of uh, DNA damaged cells and also uh, because of lack of apoptosis there are old uh, cells which are uh, on the verge of dying but do not uh, get absorbed in the body or destroyed in the body. Now as we all know as the cell progresses or uh, lives beyond the specific period of time for which it has to live, the DNA is more uh, uh, susceptible to the external stimuli and the probability of a DNA damage is more in senile or old aging cells when compared to normal cells. So that is the basic or the most important uh, uh, molecular uh, uh, focus or which is responsible for a tissue co converting into a cancerous tissue. Now the other most important uh, factor as I talked about is the ability to metastasize into other uh, different other tissues or a local uh, tumor cell invasion. Now how this takes place or how uh, a, no, a cancerous uh, tumor cell is, differs from a benign uh, tumor cell is the presence of urokinase type plasminogen activator UPA. If you remember this particular term you can easily know that this term sets a benign tumor and a cancerous tissue far apart. Now what this urokinase type plasminogen activator does is nothing but it activates or uh, binds to a UPA receptor which is normally present in the human body and hence it activates or uh, destroys the matrix metalloproteins that is short form uh, known as MMPs. Now these matrix metalloproteinases are nothing but the basic glycoproteins or uh, polysaccharides which are responsible to hold uh, two uh, different cells or two same cells together. In other words, this is the basic or a groundwork or a meshwork which is responsible for holding two cells and the basic constraint for the uh, ground substance which or a cement which uh, enables these cells to 
uh, bind together or be at a, a close proximity with each other. Now, this metal uh, MMPs are destroyed by the uh, UPA, uh, uranus uh, actuators. Hence, because of the destruction of the ground substance, there is uh, total disruption or spaces created between the different cells. Now, whenever there are spaces created by different cells, there's connection between the other two different spaces or two different layers, which enables the cancer cells to go through these uh, spaces and spread into the different uh, uh, tissues. Now, if you see over here, a schematic representation, a cancer cell uh, with the production of uh, this UPA binds with a UPA receptor uh, on the extracellular matrix, destruction of uh, extracellular matrix, which helps in the loosening of the intercellular junctions or intracellular junctions. Now, this loosening will cause spaces, as you can see over here, wherein the cancer cell gradually attaches itself by various uh, addition molecules or so VCAM, ICAM or different types of addition molecules or proteins and this via this uh, via the process goes migrates into the other tissue because of the spaces created by the dissolution of uh, or destruction of the extracellular matrix. Now after it uh, the uh, cancer cell progresses from the uh, original site into the uh, in, intra uh, intra into in inner substances or inner spaces. Now, how it uh, transfers itself to other tissues, uh, depending upon what kind of circulation or what kind of uh, uh, area this uh, primary site is present at. Now, if it is, uh, if the spread is through the lymphatic system or the uh, wide uh, circular, uh, wide network of uh, lymphatic systems, it is uh, uh, called as a carcinoma, wherein these uh, primary cells travel through the lymphatic fluid. Now, if it is through the bloodstream, they are called sarcomas. Now, it could be through uh, two different spaces altogether, depending upon the primary site. Now, that would be a transylomic uh, metastasis or to the uh, epithelial surface itself, such as in your uh, malignant melanoma, wherein the ma melanoma spreads via the uh, epithelial surface to different uh, areas within the skin or the mucous membrane itself. Or, as I said, uh, accidental medical procedures such as direct implants, wherein the cancer tissues are forced into deeper tissues, wherein the, they are forced into uh, the circulatory system, and these cancer tissues are carried out to different other tissues to produce secondary sites of cancer. Now, you can see how uh, the primary site, if uh, this is considered as the primary site, because of the production of UPA, there's destruction of uh, extracellular matrix. Now because of that uh, destruction, there's loosening of spaces created wherein these cancer cells transfer, uh, go via the space into the uh, stream, be it the blood stream or the uh, lymphatic uh, stream. In this case, this is the blood stream over here. And how this spreads via the blood stream goes into some other point wherein uh, it attaches itself to the inner uh, epithelial lining, again produces UPA, destroys the uh, extracellular matrix, extravasates into the external uh, environment and then produces a secondary site of cancer. The, again, a detailed uh, uh, description of the same uh, process, the local invasion by the cancer cells, intravasation, circulation, extravasation, and product, uh, uh, production of the secondary site. Now, at the secondary site, it depends upon uh, the state or the human immunity, uh, immunity, pro immunity effect or uh, prowess of the human, uh, of the subject, wherein the can secondary cancer cells might survive uh, for a longer period of time or it might uh, just lay dormant at that particular point uh, which is the most important uh, part during the treatment of a cancer uh, uh, patient. Now in a, this dormant, dormant part uh, if not detected at an earlier state will produce a secondary uh, growth at a later date. Now if you see the different uh, molecules which are responsible, we can see the primary molecule over here during the intravasation and extravasation process is your matrix metalloproteinases which is the ground substance or the glycoproteins responsible. Now this addition or production of uh, the secondary site wherein these cancer cells adhere to the secondary sites is via the various addition molecules as you can see over here, VCAMs and uh, ICAMs which are nothing but the addition molecules of proteins. Now, that is responsible for the extravasation process at the secondary site. Now, this uh, shows at which uh, point uh, your cancer cell is, uh, uh, is present, the primary site is present 
it depends the secondary site depends upon the primary site of the cancerous tissue now suppose if we take uh, the primary site to be a breast cancer now because of the circulatory systems which is present over there its anatomical uh, 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 proximity to the other tissues the lymphatic supply or the blood supply to that particular tissue depending upon all these factors it is uh, mostly seen that, that majority of the times the breast cancer a primary site the secondary site is seen in the bone tissues uh, or the bone metastasis near the shoulder or the uh, uh, this uh, pectoral uh, region now depending upon that you can see how uh, different uh, tissues at uh, different areas the uh, primary again as i said uh, depending upon the different factors the secondary sites uh, totally depend upon which primary site is affected so now moving over to the treatment part which is one of the most important uh, or the uh, most diabolical uh, part of a uh, uh, oral cancer patient because it totally depends upon the investigative prowess of the uh, dental physician or the uh, health physician as such now the stage at which it is uh, diagnosed the size of the tumor which is uh, diagnosed or the age uh, of the patient the other medical uh, uh, complications of the patient now all these factors taken into care the treatment of an oral cancer patient differs uh, widely now the treatment basically uh, is uh, uh, divided into these uh, uh, different uh, types starting with the most age old uh, or the conventional kind of treatment that is a surgical process uh, followed by radiotherapy use, use using a radiation and a, or a radiation energy uh, to destroy this cancer cells your radiotherapy or using chemicals which might be biologically obtained or uh, synthesized that will be your chemotherapy or a combination depending upon the anatomical site of the uh, cancer or depending upon the age or depending upon the kind of uh, cancer we are treating there might be a combined approach wherein uh, both uh, radiotherapy chemotherapy is combined or uh, with surgery or used alone now there is a newer therapy also called as biological therapy still few of the uh, biological therapies are under uh, research but uh, holds a, a good promise which uh, totally uh, overpasses or bypasses the disadvantages or the uh, limitations of the age old conventional therapies now as you know uh, chemotherapy is nothing but usage of a uh, chemical uh, substances both uh, biologically obtained or uh, uh, synthetically uh, produced uh, chemicals which uh, basically uh, act by uh, disrupting a specific process during the pro uh, in the cancerous uh, tissue survival now uh, basically most of the uh, ke uh, chemical substances which are uh, produced or used uh, nowadays they act on specific uh, cell targets which basically leads to disruption of the growth which is the uh, primary uh, characteristic of a cancerous tissue or a, or a tumor tissue for that purpose the disruption of the growth signals or disruption of the growth cycle is the primary uh, process by which a, chem a chemical in a chemotherapy acts on a cancerous tissue now as you can see if you see over here how in general a, ke a chemical substance disrupts the process of the growth disrupts the uh, dna molecules they were stopping the growth temporarily although we have to take uh, see that this might act on a uh, only a uh, uh, few cancer cells not all cancer cells depending upon the uh, uh, level of maturity of that cancer cell thereby there is a, a chance or a probability of a secondary recurrence or a recurrence of this uh, tissue wherein the all the cancer cells may not be totally uh, destroyed by this process now if you take for example when we see the various uh, spectrum of chemicals which are obtained uh, you can see if you take for example the vinca alkaloids or the taxanes we all know in the normal growth cycle during the process of dna synthesis there is doubling of microtubules wherein the microtubules uh, collect together there is uh, production excess production doubling of the microtubules and thereby when it further proceeds into the next uh, stage there is a disru uh, disruption or a breakage of this uh, microtubules into two halves thereby producing the daughter cells now vinca alkaloids prevents the assembly of microtubules thereby again uh, pro stopping the process of cell growth or taxanes on the other hand it uh, prevents the uh, uh, microtubules disassembly that is it prevents the production of the daughter cells thereby stopping the growth cycle
Now we can see the various drugs uh, which are used in chemotherapy. They are classified according to the type or the according to the procedure or uh, uh, area upon which they act. The primarily used are the cytotoxic drugs, which are basically uh, directly acting upon the cells, destroying the cells itself. Uh, that is to say it is cytotoxic in nature the primarily used are the nit uh, uh, alkylating agents most commonly the uh, nitrogen mustards alkyl sulfonates nitrosurease they basically cytotoxic both to the cancerous tissue as well as the normal tissue thereby the side effects or the complications of using the chemotherapy is far more greater than any other procedure used now there are also anti metabolites now this basically stops the various metabolic processes which are responsible for dna production or dna ampli uh, doubling of this dna they nothing but uh, stopping the cell process in the uh, growth phase itself the uh, via uh, uh, see via acting upon the different metabolisms as you can see the folate uh, process folates is uh, responsible for dna amplification now this antagonist itself uh, such as methotrexate uh, leads to the stoppage of the cell uh, cycle we can see purine antagonist pyrimidine antagonist all these basically uh, is responsible for the nuclear uh, doubling of the nuclear uh, replications all these uh, vincaalkanoids or taxins all these are basically against the metabolic processes which are responsible for the normal cell growth now there is also as i said in the etiological factors there are also uh, various uh, hormones which are responsible or the link has been found between the hormone levels and the pro uh, production or uh, initiation of uh, uh, this uh, proto oncogenes into oncogenes now uh, depending upon which etiology is uh, responsible for a cancer in that particular patient an anti uh, hormone is given to that uh, in that particular specific patient Uh, be it the glucocorticoids or estrogens or anti-estrogen, all these are uh, uh, chemicals which are ag act against the hormones, hormones which are responsible for production of a cancerous tissue. Now the complications in in general, it is divided into uh, acute and chronic uh, toxicities. Now acute toxicities are nothing but a, a wide variety of uh, toxicities which are uh, attributed to all chemical substances which are used. in chemotherapy such as your uh, mucositis if you consider the oral uh, mucosa or the uh, loss of hair or darkening of the skin all these are general uh, side complications which are seen because of the usage of chemicals itself and the chronic toxicities on the other hand can be attributed to single group of chemicals depending upon whether they are cytotoxic or depending upon whether they are hormonal uh, uh, milieu or uh, depending upon uh, uh, the second type of uh, uh, second group of uh, chemicals the anti metabolites so depending upon the groups of uh, chemicals which are used to combat the cancer tissue the, the toxicities attributed to this general group are uh, come under the chronic toxicity now when we talk about the radiological uh, factors which are responsible or uh, hold the key uh, in the radiotherapy how radiotherapy actually helps in uh, destroying the cancer cells it depends upon the various uh, factors or uh, uh, principles of radio biology or the five uh, different principles upon which this uh, radiotherapy acts upon the first principle is the repair principle now we all know that the potentiality the potential of a normal cell to repair and come back to its normal uh, state owing to the effect of p53 gene which i already told you about is far more greater than the uh, repair potential of a dna damaged cell that is your cancerous cell so depending upon the uh, the the lag between the time uh, between a, a normal cell and a, a abnormal or a cancerous cell this is taken into account when radiotherapy is used in and the radiotherapy acts upon the cells where uh, the cancer cells in much more effective way when compared to the normal cells now there's no denying the fact that the normal cells are also affected but the extent to which the normal cells are destroyed is far more less when compared to a normal cell primarily because of the repairing capacity uh, of uh, a normal cell when compared to a, a cancerous cell that is the first radiological uh, principle upon which a radiotherapy works in the second is the repopulation now we all know because owing to the repairing capacity the dna is a uh, far more uh, at a, is uh, repaired at a faster rate in a normal cell thereby 
<clears throat> since the DNA is uh, repaired faster, <clears throat> it goes into the cell cycle much faster. It, uh, the replication of the DNA takes place uh, much faster. So there's repopulation of the normal cells or the normal colony of cells much more faster in the in, during the period of a radiotherapy. Which I'm not talking about the normal uh, period wherein obviously the cancer cells uh, grow at a faster rate. During the period of radiotherapy, repopulation of the normal cells is much more faster because of the faster healing of DNA. The, uh, the third one is a reoxygenation or a, a reoxygenation. Now we all know the effect the radiation has on biological tissues. In the previous session, I told you about the biological effects of uh, radiation upon the health tissue, health of a tissue or the biology of a tissue. And the primary uh, part or the primary role which is played in this uh, whole process is your oxygen free radicals. Now the presence of oxygen and the absence of oxygen plays an important role as to how well uh, the radiotherapy which we give out to that specific tissue acts or uh, destroys the cancer tissue. The production of oxygen free radicals because of the energy generated by, uh, by the radiations is responsible for uh, the destruction of the cells in its surrounding area. Now in a cancer tissue normally what we see is the uh, innermost cancerous tissue are shielded from the outside effect uh, or uh, outside uh, 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 normal tissues or the normal periphery of cancerous tissue this hypoxic uh, state which is seen or which is uh, the artificial hypoxic state which is produced in the innermost cancer cells prevent it or shield it from the harmful effects of radiation primarily because there is no oxygen and no production of free radicals now what is, uh, happens over here is reoxygenation is a process wherein these hypoxic cells are reoxygenized uh, or the normal partial pressures of oxygen is uh, re-entered into the cancer tissues thereby making it more susceptible to the radiation effects. Now the last fourth or the fifth factor is the re recruitment or the redistribution as I told you a cell is most uh, uh, susceptible to the radiation effects or the radiation harmful effects of radiation during its uh, growth phase that is the phase wherein the DNA tissue is at its maximum level the DNA tissue where, uh, or the RNA are the most uh, susceptible macromolecules or uh, biological macromolecules to the radiation therapy. So during the cell cycle, the phase wherein the DNA uh, content, the quantity doubles itself. It is this phase wherein it is most susceptible to radiation therapy. So what uh, uh, radiation uh, radiotherapy aims at is it tries to redistribute the different populations of cells. Now we all know that uh, the cells might be in different stages of this uh, uh, radiation of uh, the cell cycle. Now what it uh, basically does is bring or pool or repopulate or redistribute this colony into the specific S phase or the G1 phase wherein there is maximal quantity of nuclear quantity thereby uh, improving its uh, susceptibility or uh, reception to the external radiation therapy. So depending upon these radiobiological uh, 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 principles, the basic uh, process or the protocol of radiotherapy is determined and then uh, the radiotherapy is uh, uh, given out to the cancer tissue in the most accepted protocol. Now the indications of radiotherapy, uh, predominantly it is used for smaller size uh, tumor cells, normally in the T1 or the T2 stage. Now in the T3 or T4, if it is locally advanced, the radiotherapy is given primarily because of the effects or the harmful effects which is seen by this radiation on normal tissues. To minimize the effect of on normal tissues, a T3, T4 larger tissue cells which are not uh, uh, distantly advancing or which are just locally uh, advancing uh, lesions or the initial stages or small uh, tumor cells like T1 or T2 sizes are used in, the, uh, in uh, radiotherapy. Along with that, uh, for cervical uh, lymph nodes, if they are uh, enlarged, if they are local uh, with no metastasis or just initial uh, invasions or small uh, cervical lymph nodes, now these are the cases where radiotherapy is given along with uh, palliative radiotherapy which is nothing but uh, a combination uh, radiotherapy which is given for with other chemotherapeutical agents. Now the advantages, as we all know, Compared to surgical processes, the aesthetic value of a post-operative uh, uh, post phase 
the aesthetic value of radiotherapy is much more higher when compared to a surgical procedure. Uh, there is no huge amount of uh, extra normal tissues or normal functional losses with the usage of radiotherapy. Now, we all know uh, as we uh, during the process of surgery itself, uh, the surgical uh, the cancerous tissues are dealt on a one-to-one -one basis. Now, different areas might need different surgical procedures, different num multiple times of uh, surgical procedures have to be uh, uh, performed. Now, with radiotherapy, the whole area as such can be uh, radiated and uh, the, it, the treatment of multiple uh, cancers at a single point can be done. Now, <coughs> when uh, also compared to the surgical procedures, uh, the radiotherapy procedure, the chances of a secondary uh, uh, occurrence is much more lesser when uh, compared to a surgical procedures, primarily owing to the fact that surgical procedures have always the risk of direct implantation at the surgical site, which I talked about. So what are the disadvantages? As I uh, talked in the last session, the various radiation effects on normal tissues, there's uh, your mucositis, uh, xerostomia, when uh, we are talking about the uh, oral complications, there's a loss of taste, taste acuity is lost, dryness of the mouth, all these are the normal radiation effects on the areas innovated or the normal tissues within the oral maxillofacial region. Now the later complications, I told you the chronic complications which are uh, seen in these areas primarily because of the obstruction of the blood vessels, there is loss of uh, nutrition or uh, blood or immunity factors owing to the blood uh, present within the blood into these tissues because of the closing down of these blood vessels. Now, this leads to later sequelae. All these are the acute uh, side complications as well as chronic side complications related to radiations on normal uh, tissues now that is a primary uh, of primary importance in uh, uh, while using radiotherapy for cancers also because of the uh, recent modifications wherein uh, there is uh, as i told about uh, the fourth and the fifth radio radiological factors wherein the uh, the physician tries to repopulate these uh, different uh, cells in different stages of cell cycle into one group or the G1 phase or the G1 phase or the S phase. Now this uh, will need some kind of uh, some amount of time for these uh, cells to all repopulate into one specific area. Now because of that the treatment uh, time period for a radiotherapy is also extended uh, so as to because the physician ensures that all these uh, cells are populated at a single area. Now that increases the surgical uh, radiotherapy time when compared to other modes of uh, treatment. So and also uh, it is uh, on the expensive side because of the basic infrastructure which is needed for radiotherapy. Now the uh, normal uh, different types of delivery of radiotherapy again uh, depends upon the uh, infrastructure present, the cost, the expenses, uh, the uh, affordability of the patient, uh, the tissue size, the cancer tissue size, the age of the patient. And the extent to which the uh, tissue has uh, progressed in its uh, local area or presence or absence of uh, secondary areas. So all these uh, factors are taken into account and then the specific approach is uh, present, uh, presented to the patient for treatment of us, that specific cancer tissue. Now among them we have the external beam radiotherapy which is the most conventional kind of a radiotherapy. Uh, not uh, so it has been used from uh, for uh, since ages. Now there is brachytherapy, uh, which is uh, one of the most newer uh, kind of uh, uh, treatments for uh, using radiation to combat cancer, which I'll be talking about. And uh, one of the most effective uh, ther uh, therapies of radio th uh, for radiation uh, delivery in the recent uh, times is your uh, 3D conformational or IMRT, which is also called as intensity modulated radiotherapy which uh, increases the uh, susceptibility of the uh, cancerous tissues alone and sparing the normal tissues by uh, using the uh, technical advances that is the most recent uh, uh, advances in uh, radiotherapy. Now the basic difference between a uh, conventional kind of uh, radiotherapy and an intensity modulated or a 3D approach is this if you can see the schematic uh, uh, this uh, CT uh, scans over here we can see how in an e e EBRT uh, treatment the whole area 
along with the cancerous tissue with the normal tissues affected in this uh, area. If you can see if you are inundating or uh, uh, radiating this particular part, the whole area along with the cancerous tissue and the normal tissues is radiated. So as to say that although the cancerous tissues are uh, taken, being taken care of, there is also complications which are related to the radiation effects on the normal tissue. Now what happens in an intensity modulated? Now intensity modulated uses a wedge kind of filter wherein uh, what it happens is what happens is only the areas present uh, which are present uh, which are affected with cancer depending upon the different kind of uh, uh, beams or uh, intensity upon which uh, these uh, radiations can present itself onto the human body the maximal intensity of radio radiation is focused upon the areas which are actually uh, cancerous in nature and the less intensity are uh, kind of a uh, radiations thereby reducing the side effects or thereby reducing the effects radiological effects on normal tissue the lesser intensity rays are then projected at the same time on normal tissues so as to say we are totally uh, 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 avoiding the uh, complications of uh, the radiation uh, effects on normal tissue and maximizing the effect of radiation on cancerous tissue thereby resulting in this kind of topography. Now, the other kind of uh, therapy is your brachytherapy predominantly used for local, uh, uh, locally invasive uh, uh, cancerous uh, areas or small kind of uh, small T1 or T2 uh, kind of uh, sizes of uh, cancerous tissues. Now, what uh, brachytherapy uh, does is, is no, uh, nothing but brachy is short. So a short distance radiotherapy is nothing but brachytherapy. So what uh, this short distance is this uh, radio isotopes uh, which are available uh, commercially such as radium, cesium, iridium or iodine. These uh, radio isotopes are placed in small pellets which are placed within the vicinity of that uh, cancerous tissue so as to localize the effect of the radiation which is produced from these radio isotopes to a, a small a radius within which the cancerous tissue is present. Now what be, uh, it does is it prevents uh, the use uh, the uh, prevents the effect of radiation on the normal tissues. Also it also cuts down the cost of the expense process which is related which is a primary disadvantage of an uh, IMRT or an intensity modulated radiotherapy. Now the placement of uh, these radioisotopes, uh, the mode of placement of these radioisotopes depends on which cancer site is affected. Now, the most common kind is the intracavitary kind of uh, brachytherapy when within the CSFX or uh, cancer of the nasopharynx or the oropharynx, these uh, radionucleotides such as uh, iridium-192 which is a radioisotope of iridium which is placed in that specific area via wires or uh, small pellets. There, uh, kept for a specific period of time, the, after the radiation is uh, given out to the specific areas, it is then taken back out. Now the other type is the interstitial brachytherapy, wherein a, a, a cancer a tissue uh, mass itself, if it is well localized, now the, this radioisotopes is directly embedded within the uh, tumor tissue itself, they by, uh, the, with the uh, uh, effect of this radiation, the size of the tumor uh, uh, decreases or to totally is uh, negated and once the size decreases, the radioisotope is taken out and uh, the remaining uh, part is uh, excised out with a scalpel, thereby reducing the effects of radiation on the normal tissue, also uh, giving better aesthetical properties because uh, basically the size of tumor is reduced and the amount of scalpel which has to be used over there is totally reduced. Now the other one is a mold therapy wherein uh, predominantly used in cases of uh, uh, cancers of the skin or the mucous membrane wherein a mold which is uh, uh, radioisotopically embedded is uh, placed over the area for a specific period of time. Now after the effect is seen the mold is taken out. Again the most commonly used uh, radioisotope is the iridium 192. This is most commonly seen in the oral maxillofacial region wherein the, if the heart palate is, uh, is affected a shield, a metallic uh, radioisotopic shield is placed against the heart palate and kept in position for a few days and then taken out. So what are the advances in uh, radiotherapy? Now the first is the radiation fractionization. Now the process of radiation fractionization is nothing but to ensure 
there's sufficient amount of time is given for the normal cells to recoup itself and come back to its normal state now we as we have uh, told about the reoxygenation and the re, uh, repair process which is one of the radiological factors now this radiation fractionation gives a, a time period or a specific period of time of interval between active radiation therapy which enables the normal cells to recover back to its normal position and uh, uh, which is at a faster rate when compared to the normal cancer tissues now this combined therapy as i told you uh, in in case of a uh, brachytherapy wherein the size of the tissue is uh, first reduced by uh, placing a radioisotope within the tissue mass uh, thereby reducing the size of the tumor and then going for the conventional surgical type which uh, gives better aesthetical properties to the patient now that is a combined therapy one of the advances of radiotherapy there is stereotactic radiation now what is a stereotactic radiation it is this a uh, this principle or the stereotactic radiation depends or basically is uh, derived from the imrt or the intensity modulated radiotherapy wherein using specific uh, linear accelerators as you can see over here a uh, linear accelerators and secondary collimators what it does it specifically uh, affects the only the tissue of uh, which is affected by the cancer and sparing all other tissues in the within its part path as well as around the cancer tissue uh, they were negating the effects of a uh, radiation or normal tissue as you can see over here gamma knife which is one of the uh, procedures where in stereotactic radiation is used where in a cobalt uh, 60 is used as a radioisotope and the gamma rays which are produced from this cobalt are specifically targeted via a helmet a copper helmet only the target or the specific area of cancer is uh, is targeted by this gamma rays and sparing all other areas they were reducing the amount of complications which are seen now the other radio sensitizers and radio protectors which are recently used now radio sensitizers is nothing but as the name suggests it sensitizes the cancer tissue to the effects of radiation now how it does that the again the process of reoxygenation as i told you oxygen is the primary uh, role player wherein the oxygen free radicals are produced and damage is uh, dealt out to the surrounding tissues now what this radio sensitizers done uh, do is since it cannot uh, produce oxygen within the cancer tissues what it does it it imitates or mimics the oxygen molecules by uh, getting attached to the cancer uh, tissues they were producing free radicals uh, mimicking uh, oxygen and then these uh, free radicals uh, affect or uh, produce the damage uh, locally within the cancer tissue sparing the normal tissue now that uh, the radio sensitizers the most common radio sensitizers used are uh, seen here uh, the arsenic trioxide the cisplatin fluorouracil fluorouracil interferon uh, alpha all these are radio sensitizers which mimic uh, oxygen uh, molecules thereby uh, uh, spelling out its uh, damage to the cancer tissues leaving sparing out the normal tissue now the uh, the other last one is a radio protectors among which uh, only uh, amifostin is the more uh, accepted uh, fda uh, drug wherein it uh, protects the normal uh, tissue from the cancerous tissue by uh, promoting the repair of the normal tissues now amifostin is uh, uh, has been used in the uh, radiotherapy of the oral and maxillofacial region wherein it has been uh, used to reduce the effect of uh, radiation on salivary glands thereby reducing uh, xerostomy or dryness of the mouth has been has been increasingly uh, used in the recent times and has been found very effective wherein it promotes or helps in the repair of uh, salivary gland tissues of the parenchymal cells within the salivary glands uh, this is the only drug which is approved by fda right now Uh, that being the radio protectors the oral com complications as i already told you the acute complications and the late complications the acute one depending upon the dose the uh, the greater the amount of dose greater is the complication which is seen such as your mucositis which is the reddening of the mucus or infection because of xerostomia this uh, presence of secondary infections we have a loss of taste acuity because of the destruction of the taste buds the skin changes or the bleeding again owing to the uh, disastrous effects of uh, radiation upon the uh, corpuscles or the red blood cells or the wbcs or the platelets in the within the blood 
now the late complications as i told you it is uh, uh, primarily because of a secondary effect uh, of uh, some other uh, damage such as if you take into consideration your radiation caries that is primarily because the salivary glands are affected the xerostomia and because of that there is uh, destruction of the uh, uh, in, in, uh, of the most resistive kind of surfaces of the teeth such as the lingual or the labial surfaces are also affected in radiation caries now there is osteoradial necrosis which again i have told you about the 3 h principle in the last session your hypoxic hypocellular hypovascular state now that is again produced because of the narrowing down of the blood vasculatures now because of the narrowing down there is loss of uh, oxygen hypoxic area hypoxic areas with the inner uh, radiation uh, 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 exposed areas normal tissues now because of the loss of uh, or lack of blood which is also hypocellular because uh, hypocellular reduces the red blood cells your uh, wbcs and your platelets and because of the reduction wbcs there is increased uh, pronicity of that tissue to develop infection now in the formative area uh, uh, areas where in your uh, initial uh, developmental stages when it is exposed to radiation obviously we come up with the craniofacial and other facial abnormalities now the last one of the most recent kind still in the uh, research process is a gene therapy now how this gene therapy is uh, uh, set apart from other kinds of conventional therapies is the all other therapies are basically aimed at uh, reducing the number of uh, duplicated or replicated cancer cells now they don't target the primary focus which i told you are the primary uh, cell wherein the uh, proto oncogenes have converted into oncogenes thereby converting the primary normal cell into a cancer cell the primary cell which i'm talking about that is not targeted by the other conventional kind of uh, therapies but in gene therapy what it does is because of the primary uh, etiological stimuli uh, be it the radiation or the chemotherapy which changes the dna uh, uh, structure or damages the dna or changes the gene uh, uh, sequence itself now in gene therapy we uh, uh, efforts have been done to uh, recoup the uh, or re convert that damaged gene uh, sequence back to the normal uh, sequence thereby reverting the process of an oncogene to come back to a proto oncogene state now that is the main aim of gene therapy thereby it is mainly focusing upon your cancer cell itself the primary focus rather than the other duplicated uh, cells around uh, this cancer cell as you can clearly see the conventional uh, kind of cancer therapy deals with the replicated kind of uh, uh, cells and leaving out the primary uh, area or a primary cancer cell which is nothing but a normal cell with a abnormal uh, gene sequence and again the chance of recurrence because the uh, primary cell again starts to uh, grow back and there is tumor relapse now that is not the case with gene therapy the primary cell itself the cancer therapy is targeted the gene is a uh, gene sequence is uh, converted back uh, pro the research is going on to that effect and then uh, but naturally after a period of time the other cells uh, gradually die and go away because the primary uh, stimulus itself is not there now the research is still going on uh, however uh, hard uh, may uh, cancer may be to beat or however difficult it may be or however long it might take for this uh, researchers to come up with a perfect treatment plan for cancer the uh, research is still going on uh, and yes the mortality and the morbidity rate are also coming down in the recent times because of cancer now that uh, brings us to the end of oral cancer and treatment thank you for